Welcome back to Grid Drop. Today, we're going to help you get faster around one of Formula One's most iconic tracks, Zandvoort. If you enjoy this video, feel free to leave any feedback or questions in the comment section, or my Discord, which is linked in the description. That being said, let's get right into it. This video will be broken down into five sections. Car setup, sector one, sector two, sector three, and finally, a full lap. These sections are all equally important, so stay tuned to the end of the video if you really want to improve. So here's the setup I run in the Netherlands. Feel free to pause the video and screenshot this if you want to try out this setup on your own. This setup prioritizes balanced aerodynamics, especially front-end rotation, and an even distribution of downforce and rear grip. As a disclaimer, this setup is a general baseline for you to start with, and applies to both hot laps and a race. I recommend doing a few laps with this setup and tweaking it to fit your own style. The first corner is a wide right-hander, but unfortunately there aren't many good reference points for braking. What I like to do is focus on this electronic flag indicator on the left. I use this as my first reference point, and I know that I should brake about a car length beyond this point. My second reference point is the last big Netherlands flag on the left. I want to brake slightly before this. So, long story short, try to brake between the electronic flag sign and the second Netherlands flag. Under braking now, start turning into the corner at the same time you start to bleed off the brake. You definitely want to avoid locking up here. Once rotating into the corner, really aim to stay close to this inside wall. The line through here is simply an outside, inside, outside line. At the apex of the corner, start getting back on the power. Early acceleration is very, very important around this track, and good corner exits can really improve your lap times. Accelerating now, try to keep the car on the limit, and use the entire width of the track on exit. You can use the exit curb here, but it's a bit rough, so I try to stay away from it. Out of the corner now, quickly drift towards the middle of the track to get a good entry into the next corner. As this twisty section approaches, aim for your left tire to be as close to this curb as possible. Turn into the corner, and again, aim to be very close to this inside curb. Just after the turn-in point at this corner, you need a very slight tap of the brakes. It's easy to brake too much here, but under-braking can really help you carry more speed into the next corner. To put it more simply, instead of braking 50% for this corner and 50% for the next corner, you can brake 20% here and 80% there. Keep your car as close to the right curb as you can when entering this corner, and after a very slight tap of the brakes, continue flat out up this small hill. Into this next corner, you should be really hitting the brakes at the orange part of this barrier on the left. This is an extremely heavy braking zone, especially if you correctly carry the speed through the last corner. Under braking, turn into the left, and you can use the banking as a sort of backstop. The banking helps you brake more effectively and carry speed around the bend. Start accelerating about halfway through the corner, and similar to the first corner, really try to keep the car on the edge here. Extend fully to the right side of the track, but again, try to steer clear of this curb. At this point, you should be at full throttle. Now, through this section, take the straightest line you can, and obviously stay flat out. Make sure you bounce between each inside curb as they come. So, that's a look at Sector 1, now let's see it at full speed. The first corner of Sector 2 is arguably the hardest one to perfect throughout the lap, mostly because it's almost a blind entry. Upon reaching the top of this hill, watch for this patch of pavement on the left. As soon as you pass this, you want a slight tap of the brakes, or a medium lift. I prefer to slightly tap the brakes and downshift one time, as it gives me more control over the car to make sure I get a good line. The entry into this corner can be really difficult to get down, so continue practicing this one in time trials if you're struggling. Once in the corner and after that slight tap of the brakes, or lift, Instantly get back on the throttle. You can carry a lot of grip through here, so stay on the gas and stick close to this inside curb, and extend all the way to the outside curb on the left. Once exiting, sway towards the middle of the track before cutting close to this inside curb on the left. This gives you a wider entry into the next corner. Into this fast right-hander, again, you want a very slight tap of the brakes, a single downshift, and to start turning in right after the 50 meter board on the left. Similar to the last corner, as soon as you brake, you should be immediately back on the throttle, as you can carry a lot of grip and speed through here. I try to attack this inside curb as much as I can, and keep the throttle pinned. At the apex, aim to extend all the way to the left here and create the straightest line possible. Now, on the left side of the track, get as close as you can to the curb, but don't ride up on it. 
This one is a little bit bumpy and can upset your car's stability. There aren't many reference points for braking here, but I like to focus on the specific orange section within the curb. I know it's hard to single this one out, but after a few laps you'll recognize it as the one before leads you to brake too early, and the one after too late. Under braking, turn into the corner and again, try to attack this inside curb. At the mid corner point you should be back on the throttle, and really try to get maximum rotation. This corner is a little bit slower than the last two, so it's easy to feel some understeer here. Upon exiting, sway all the way to the left side of the track, almost even touching this curb. While you do this, you should be consistently increasing the throttle, trying to keep the car right on the edge of grip. As soon as you're through, sway to the right side of the track towards the meter boards. On the right side now, watch for the 50 meter board as an indicator. The real braking point is this patch of concrete on the right, so as soon as this starts, brake. It's important to note that you don't want to be all the way to the right here, more so the middle right of the track. Under braking now, downshift a few times and focus on rotating the car into the corner. This corner isn't bad for understeer, and it's pretty easy to get good rotation if your braking is good. Again, at the apex, increase the throttle and sway out to the right side of the track. Now on exit, power down and enable DRS at the line. That's a run through of sector 2, now let's see it at full speed. Sector 3 is only a few corners. Stick to the left side of the track here and watch for the 100 meter board on the left. You want to brake just after this board, about a car length beyond it. Under braking now, keep your eyes focused on the apex of the corner here. Also, it's important to note that it's easy to brake too much here. Pretty much as soon as you turn in, you can release the brake and coast through the corner. When turning in, make sure to not take too much of the inside curb. Once through the corner, a quick tap of the gas can help propel you towards the hairpin, but once you start turning in, hit about 50% brake pressure. I like to stick close to this inside curb at the beginning of the corner, and widen to the middle throughout. I think this earlier apex helps with a better exit. On the exit now, try to avoid going over this outside curb, as this one's also a little bit bumpy. Sway towards the left side of the track now, and watch for this 50 meter board sign on the left. You should brake and turn into the corner about a car length ahead of this sign. Braking should be about 50% here, and you really want to rotate to get the car close to this inside curb. On exit, widen out to the left, but absolutely avoid taking too much of this outside curb. This can really sting if you hit it the wrong way. Now, enable DRS and use the banking to your advantage. Drop low towards the grass for a sort of slingshot effect here, and straighten out towards the top when rounding the corner. Now, full power down the straight and towards the finish line. That's a look at Sector 3, now let's see it at full speed. Now let's take a look at a full lap. So there you have it, a full lap of Zandvoort broken down corner by corner and sector by sector. If you have any questions or need more tips, feel free to leave a comment on this video or on my Discord. I plan on doing track guides for every track again on F124, so subscribe to stay tuned. Again, if you made it this far, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.